You're welcome. Thank you, Ken. Thanks for having us, and thanks to those of you who stuck around this evening. We have been on a tour of the community, and we've done about 60 of these presentations. So I'm assuming that all of those who have left have probably seen this, and some of you may have seen this already. Uh, what we are trying to do is make sure that the entire community has all of the information that it needs to make a decision on, on November 8th, which is Election Day. The uh, it's interesting sitting here and, and listening to all of the speakers tonight uh, to see how we all are, as members of this community, those of us who live here, work here, are so intertwined in what we do. Uh, the hospital affects us. We're very excited about the hospital on the curriculum standpoint. We have at our high school institute of study where a student can try out engineering and a course of study in engineering to see if that's what he or she really wants to do in college. Great way to save money in your freshman year of college and not waste it on a on a major that a student may not 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 make it through. Um, but we have a an advanced uh, sciences and medicine curriculum path, and so we're very excited about the opportunity to have a hospital so close that our students can do internships and get some real experience in the hospital. So we've been working really closely with Dave and talking to them. He's been very generous with his time in letting us know what their hospital can be like, so what the impact it may have on us. Um, in addition, we hope that for some of you, especially those of you in real estate and who have businesses and are in economic development, we will help draw those who, uh, those physicians or other staff members who may live in the Austin area and who are thinking about commuting to work at the hospital. Hopefully, the school district will draw some of them, some of them out here once they see how great it is living in this community and, and how um, exemplary the school district is. Um, you all come to uh, hear presentations like this because you value this community. It's an exemplary community, and you get to decide what happens here, but only if you vote in this election. When, um, and Ken mentioned this earlier, a couple of people have mentioned the fact that the school district is exemplary. It's exemplary the second year in a row. An exemplary rating is the highest rating that the state agency, the Texas Education Agency, bestows upon a school district. And it's about the highest student performance. And to give you some context about what that means, there are 1,030 school districts in the state of Texas. Only 44 of them are exemplary this year. So it's quite an accomplishment for the entire community to be able to celebrate this, this exemplary rating again this year. Um, <clears throat> I will take questions since we have a small group. Um, uh, any, any time you, you want to ask questions, we're doing a shortened version tonight, so I know you all want to get home. And then all of this information is on our website, and there's much more there, too, so I'll show you how to get to that at the end of the presentation. Um, this all started with the Citizens Bond Advisory Committee. These were a group of 27 individuals. They represent each and every attendance zone in the school district. They come from all kind of backgrounds, all types of uh, areas of expertise, young, old, retired, kids in school, no kids in school, all different types of people. They had real estate backgrounds, finance backgrounds, hospital backgrounds, all different types of, um, of professional experience as well. And they met for some long, long meetings, March through May of this last year. They had a lot of questions for us. They poured over demographic, uh, financial, and operational data of the district. They had a lot of suggestions. Uh, they made us go back to the drawing board on some things and get better information, and so we did that. So they challenged us a lot and ended up coming together um, with a recommendation, and they came to a board, a board of trustees meeting and recommended a $158.5 million bond package be brought before the district voters. A couple of weeks later, in a 7-0 unanimous vote, the board called a bond election to be held this November 8th. What the Bond Advisory Committee told us was, we need space for students, That's what they told the board. So this is a, a, a historical enrollment chart of our enrollment. I mean, you'll see we've been steadily increasing. If you've lived here for a long time, it's probably comes as no surprise. The trajectory has gotten a little steeper in the past few years, and that's what we're experiencing right now in our schools. Um, we hire professional demographers 
and they have told us they help us plan for what what the school should look like in the next years and um, they have told us that we should expect a growth rate of about six to seven percent annually when we compare our August 2011 enrollment to our August 2010 enrollment we actually had a 7.8 percent enrollment increase so um, some of the in, in addition some of the campuses are blowing through the demo demographers highest growth projections for instance at Lake Travis Elementary which is sort of the northern end of the district it has a, it's had a 9.5 percent growth rate Lake Travis Middle School which serves the western part of the district and sort of central part of the district um, has had an 11 percent growth rate this year and in D Cave Elementary are you ready for this 22 percent growth rate over last year so they had about 600 students on campus last year they grew about 140 students this year so we've had to do quite a bit, and it's just because of what both Ross and Ken said, the growth is out 71, out Hamilton Pool Road. Ken mentioned Rocky Creek. It seems like they're in every house there are three kids who are elementary age and need to go to B Cave Elementary. So they're experiencing really rapid growth there, and of course we've had to do a lot to shore up, um, shore up their capacity there. Basically the issue is we're going to run out of capacity in these days and um, the uh, demographers give us a low medium and high projection for our growth for middle schools depending on low medium or high we're going to run out of space between 2012 and 2013 so next year or the next high school so middle schools really is our most critical our critical area right now the high school has a capacity of 2,500 students they're at about 2217 right now, and they grew about 150 students last year. And so you can see if you do the math, they're going to run out of space pretty soon. So 2013 to 2014, and for elementary schools, 2014 to 2016. This is a depiction. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, but it's basically what I just told you. It shows the, um, it shows the low, moderate, and high growth scales, and um, you can see that by 2020, Depending on the growth rate, uh, you know, we may double the um, enrollment that we have right now. We have about 7,400 students. So it just depends how we grow. And what I want you to know is that we, we look at demographers' projections on a monthly basis, uh, certainly on a semester basis. So we're very interested in keeping up. We want to see if the projections are matching up with what's actually happening. And what we're seeing right now is that they certainly are. We're seeing that the projections are real, that, um, that even with the economy, the, um, for some reason, parts of the district are faring quite well with, with respect to growing new students um, for us to serve. And of course, we will serve every student who come, comes our way. Um, this is a, a map and schedule. This basically shows, this is our quick version. I just want to quickly show you the, the four major projects that are part of this bond program. The, and, and by the way, this is our school district. It's about 125 square miles, very large district, it, um, square mileage wise. You can see 620, Hamilton Pool Road, Highway 71. The boundaries of the district are Barton Creek. I'm not good with the, I don't, I'm not good with the point. Of, I may not have one. Barton Creek right here on the south. Oh, thank you. Um, Lake Austin, Lake Travis, the Perdinalis and then um, the Hayes County line. Thank you. Um, and, uh, and so we, uh, so you'll see obviously that our schools, which are depicted with the blue block, are uh, mostly in the Lakeway, Bee Cave, Hudson Men area because that's where we've needed the schools because of the, of the student enrollment numbers. What we're seeing now is that we need to spread out west so that we can um, deal with the with capacity issues in the West. So the first project is, is to expand Hudson Bend Middle School. Hudson Bend Middle School currently holds 900 students, and we would expand it to hold 1,200. What we have seen is that operation-wise, it's more efficient to run a bigger school, um, and so that's what we would do there. Um, and also, it's just a capacity issue to have more room for students. And we would complete uh, the first phase of it, classroom phase, hopefully in 2013. And then the, um, the phase of it that expands the cafeteria makes those common areas bigger, helps with the flow of student movement in a bigger building. That would hopefully be finished by 2014. The other project would be to, bi to build a new Lake Travis Middle School, and I'll tell you why we need a new Lake Travis Middle School in a minute. So the, new, the current Lake Travis Middle School is on the same campus as the high school on 620, and um, 
The proposed site for the new Lake Travis Middle School is about a half mile off of, Bee Creek, uh, of 71 on Bee Creek Road. And you know that's where the county improvements um, are on the ballot right now on that little stretch of Bee Creek there so that it um, where it, so it'll intersect with Highlands Boulevard and that will be an easier easier road there. So that is where the new Lake Travis Middle School is slated to go. It would also be a 1,200 student middle school opening um, in 2014. Next major project is new elementary school number six. It would be located in West Cypress Hills. This, uh, this site was donated by the developers of West Cypress Hills. What we determined was um, this is a good site for where the students are located right now and where they probably will be located in the next several years because you know all of this growth, um, all of this growth at 71 and Hamilton Pool Road will cause us to need a school out there. One of the questions that we get is that Serene Hills is not full, Serene Hills Elementary, which is in Lakeway is not full, and Lake Point Elementary, which is obviously in Lake Point, or neither of them are full right now. So why would you need a new elementary school? And really the truth is if we redrew all of the attendance boundaries and we put equal numbers of kids at each campus, we would still run out of room based on these demographic projections between 2014 and 2016. So even if we did that, we'd still need this campus, so that's why it's on the ballot. Uh, to be open in 2015, sorry, 2014. And then expanding Lake Travis High School into the existing Lake Travis Middle School. So the idea is, instead of building a second high school, which is about a 150 to $200 million proposition, and really not something that we feel like we have the tax base for right now, given the projection for growth, we probably will need another high school at some point but not right now. So what we're trying to do is stretch the capacity of the high school by using the current Lake Travis Middle School as more space. So this expansion of Lake Travis Middle School, is, it's right now a 900 student campus, make it a 1,000 student campus, and so it's just an additional 1,000 student capacity for the 20, current 2,500 high school. So it would make it a 3,500 capacity high school for the um, for, for them. And we get asked sometimes, is that a ninth grade center? It's not very clear right now. Probably, if you're familiar with the campus, that would be a very pretty vast campus. So probably there will be a concentration of classes for certain certain students, maybe certain grade levels, just to make it easier for them to get to class and make sure they can get to class on time. So those are the four big projects. There are also other um, other upgrades around the district um, that are involved other than those. Obviously some renovations, well not really renovations, but upkeep and maintenance at current facilities. We would do that um, for sure. I wanted to um, show you really quickly a little bit about tax rates, <clears throat> which is really exciting to talk about at 8.45 um, at night. But basically we, the, the school district operates on, on taxes, of course, and there are two parts of the um, of our tax rate, and they're used differently. They go into two different funds. So this first, this uh, part right here, this dollar four part of the tax rate is our maintenance and operations tax rate, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. What it does is it um, we pay for the operations of the district. So we pay for staff salaries and benefits. We pay for utilities out of that, contracted services, fuel, things like that, daily operations come out of that side of the of the tax uh, tax rate. This this side of the tax rate up here is called our debt service side. That's where we pay back debt. That the money that we have or the money that we pay back in that side of the budget we use for capital improvements. So it's this side of the tax rate that we be, would be impacted by this uh, bond election if it passes. What we pay for with bond money includes of course new schools, uh, renovation and maintenance of existing facilities, we pay for buses, we pay for technology, we pay for, pay for instructional materials, things like that out of that side of the budget. These, so this, these monies go into two separate uh, funds in the budget. They're treated very differently because of the way school finance is set up in the state of Texas. We are what's called, uh, we have to pay recapture to the school district, or also called Robin Hood. So on this, on these tax dollars here, we pay, last year we paid 49% of that back to the state. So we levied it from the taxpayer and paid 49% back to the state. On this side 
of the tax rate, we get to keep 100%. So everything we levy from the, from the taxpayer, we keep. So if we have bond money to pay for capital expenses, we levy the taxpayer dollars and we pay for the expense out of that because we keep 100%. If we have to use maintenance and operations funds because we don't have funds, it's a little different. Let me give you an example. School buses cost about $100,000, okay? If we have bond funds to buy a school bus, then we levy $100,000 from the taxpayers and we write a check to the bus company for $100,000. Because of recapture on the maintenance and operations side of the fund, if we, um, if we need to purchase a $100,000 school bus, we levy about $200,000 from the taxpayer, or $197,000. We write a check for $100,000 to the bus company to purchase the bus, and we write a check for about $97,000 to the state. Okay? So you can see why it's advantageous to use this side of the tax rate to purchase capital expenses. The potential tax impact of this bond election would be um, $0.09 cents for a total tax rate of $1.40. The anticipated average market value of a residence in Lake Travis ISD is about $380,000 for this year. There are a couple of tax exemptions that, um, that residents of the school district enjoy. One is a 20% optional homestead exemption. That is called optional because it's not required by the state. So it's something that the school board has decided to um, to have here for Lake Travis. And I'm going to show you what the impact on, on actual tax liability is in just a minute. Not all school districts in the state of Texas have an optional home for the exemption. And in addition, there's a state $15,000 mandated exemption that all school districts have. It's important to note that residents who are over age 65 and have a tax freeze, so have put in for that exemption and have that exemption, will incur no tax impact if this bond passes. So the potential annual tax impact for a $400,000 home, which is about average, would be about $280 a year. And you can see, and this chart is on our website, so if you want to go look and figure out what your own individual tax liability would be, or maybe some, that for your customers, you can go look at this chart and figure that out. That um, $281 a year would be about $23 a month on an average value home in the district, or $0.75 cents a day. This is a comparison of school district tax rates in this school year. So you can see Dripping Springs. These are some surrounding school districts. Dripping Springs on the left, Eames on the right, and you can see Lake Travis sort of in the middle towards the, towards the bottom. Um, what's important to note about this is that, um, is that this is how we compare with tax rates. Of these school districts up here, Lake Travis is the only one that has the 20% optional homestead exemption. I want to show you the impact that it has on actual tax liability. Those same school districts you'll see, because Lake Travis is the only one with a 20% optional homestead exemption, you'll see that the uh, actual tax liability is the lowest of those for an average market value home in Lake Travis compared to the other school districts. And then, of course, you can see the school, um, sorry, the school district's ratings from the state, recognized, academically acceptable, and then two, two of those are exemplary means and like Travis. So what will happen if voters don't approve the bond? We get that question. Um, basically, if we don't have, if we don't have bond money to, to create permanent capacity at new facilities for students, then we'll have to use maintenance and operations funds to create temporary capacity at our current facilities, which means portable. So it's estimated that over the next five years, we would need about 68 portable classrooms in lieu of the permanent facilities throughout the district. That's about 23 at the high school, at about 12 each at each of the middle schools, and then about 12 total for the elementary schools. We would also redraw boundaries for sure at the middle schools and high schools to try, I'm sorry, middle schools and elementary schools to try to even out those, those um populations. And then also we would though redraw boundaries if the bond does pass. We'd redraw boundaries once elementary number six opens and once the new Lake Travis Middle School opens to make sure we're using um, using those spaces to our best ability. For other things on this list, and, and by the way I wanted to mention, um, I, I've seen it mentioned that we have money left over from the 2006 
bond package. And so I wanted to just quickly talk to you about that. Um, we have 3.7 million in that left over from that bond package, which was great. Some, some favorable interest rates, favorable construction costs helped us save helped us save money there. Two million of that of that 3.7 million is already appropriated. For instance, the transportation and distribution center that's out on 71, which was part of that of that bond package, we still are we're not quite closed out on that. So we have a little bit of that two. Two million dollars is due to those folks to finish out that project. Also, some other things, some small, um, small uh, equipment, things like that. It's already been appropriated by the board for those expenses. So we have about 1.7 million dollars left over in the 2006 bond package for use here or use for capital expenses. So I just wanted to to let you know about that. Um, for other things on this list, like buses, instructional materials, including library books, extracurricular materials and equipment, required maintenance and technology, which includes technology in the classroom to instruct students and then also the infrastructure that runs our district, we'd have to just make a case-by-case -case decision. So we'd have to look and say, do we have the funds in the maintenance and operations side of the budget to purchase this capital expense, tax the taxpayer double what the capital expense costs, or do we just go without? So let me give you an example. On the second day of school, I got a call from BK Elementary. They were sending the kids home at the end of the day. There was a uh, Route 1, which goes out Hamilton Pool Road, was full of kids about ready to go home. They were sitting three to a seat, and there were 29 kids who didn't fit on the bus. So of course, we had to send another bus over there. Um, we had to also um, uh, make sure that that bus is incorporated in that route. So if we get into a situation where our current bus fleet can't handle the number of students we have, we'll just have to decide. Do we purchase, out of the maintenance and operations side of the budget, a $100,000 bus for $200,000 of tax levy, or do we go without that bus and decide to decrease, maybe decrease our transportation services? So those are the kinds of sort of case-by-case -case analyses that we would do on each of those, so it's hard to say exactly what would happen. Um, this is an exemplary school district, it's an exemplary community, and you all get to decide what happens here only if you vote in this election, and voting is occurring right now, so I want to talk a little bit about that. Early voting started on Monday, October 24th. It goes through this Friday, November 4th. Election day, of course, is next Tuesday, November 8th. We have early voting locations at each and every one of our campuses. The ones that we, the voting days we have left are Hudson Bend Middle School, which is tomorrow, November 2nd, and Serene Hills Elementary School, which is Thursday. That Thursday, November 3rd. Uh, Randall's is having um, early voting like it always does. In addition, there's early voting all over Travis County, pretty much at every HEB, places like that. So if you're, you're in Travis County but not in Lakeway or in the Lake Travis area, you certainly can find a place to vote. If you need more information, this is a, the home page on our website. This is the bond icon. If you click on this, this entire presentation is there. We also have a report card on how the district has done in um, with its previous bond packages. How did we spend the money? What did we build? How did we come in on budget? Things like that. The entire demographic study is there also. So if you're a real estate agent interested in economic development, there's a free demographic study there for you, which is about 300 pages. So if you're really interested in that, you can look at that. Lots of information there, uh, frequently asked questions, that kind of stuff. So feel free to go there and get more information. If you have any questions tonight, we're happy to take them. Or if you need, if you think of something later, feel free to email us. You are our second to last stop on the tour, and we are really happy about that. We got one at eight in the morning, and then we'll be finished. Any questions tonight? I have a group from the district too to make sure that I answer questions correctly. So they're here to shore me up if anybody has any questions. Well, thank you. <laughs> I've only done it 60 times. You would expect that. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time. Please vote. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> it does. You're right. You're right. Were you a teacher? <laughs>